Just imagine, Mark Twain came, well stopped at William Station, but back then they called it Honey Lake Smith Station. And at the time, Mark Twain had stopped here. That's what the town's noted for is Mark Twain. And he stayed at an adobe shack with, against a hillside like this with a little canvas roof. Most of the people here aren't very friendly. But he, he came here as a prospector, not as a writer. And I'll tell you more, if I do the town cemetery, I'll give you an in-depth history, or if I do the covered bridge up here, we'll start an in-depth history. All I could tell you is that he came here for a short time after the adobe shack was becoming a little difficult to live in. Obviously, some of the livestock would try to get in there and get warm, or animals would come in, goats and things like that, and steal food. It just wasn't enough. The weather's horrible back in here, and he's seen it as a very dismal type of town. In his words, he said that the peak surrounding this canyon, this canyon is so deep, that the sun only touches the top of the mountains here. And later in the day, it gets bright, but the nights here are very early. So he, he, he thought of the town as a little dismal, perhaps, a little darker. He came here as a miner, hoping that when he came here, he would see silver everywhere. He didn't see silver. As a matter of fact, he had... I guess picked up a piece of mica, thought it was gold or silver, brought it to someone, and they're like, nope. He just wasn't much of a prospector. He figured instead, why not make the money? And you have, in his own words, he kind of thought his miners as slaves. He was not really a shovel digger, and after he didn't find any silver here, he left. And of course, his writing career took off, or literary career. But back in the day, he spent some time here. He left Honey Lake Smith Station went to Ragtown, which no longer exists, and came here to live. Eventually they built, if you look at the shack, they had built a new cabin and he did not stay quite long. So you get the idea. This was a town that was built on dreams and hope and has dwindled down to about 10 residents now. And as we go along this road, you can see there's just little shacks and in this case, you know, you got a little wood bridge and you have the creek that flows through Buena Vista Creek. And it's flowing. It's flowing. This is all, all old stone from the 1800s. They really built this place up and now it's all gone. Here's the old covered bridge. The only one in Nevada of its kind. This town had everything. It had a school, it had saloons, it had a hotel, it had a restaurant, assemblymen, it even held the county seat. And now you can just see that almost the entire town has been almost locked off from anybody being able to explore it. So we'll get what we can get, but we're not going to be able to investigate such sites because they're blocked off. I can take photos, I can take videos. I'll definitely do an in-depth history when I do the cemetery because that's fully accessible. But you're looking at one of the only covered bridges in the state of Nevada. It's a beautiful bridge. Don't get me wrong, it's not very long. But it crosses Buena Vista Creek. And in the mining district, it's supposedly up on the backside. When you come out here, you're supposed to be able to go up into the mining district, which we may not get to do, but still a nice day 60 degrees get some scenic photos town's very scattered and of course we'll save the cemetery like I said for last on the outskirts of town there's some areas you can explore and nobody's gonna say nothing because they're right by the road and there's no fences around them but there are fences everywhere and this is some old fencing the canyon start in the Nero because we're almost at the end of our trip, so we've almost seen it all and it's still morning. So I don't know. I don't know, man. We're at the covered bridge. Peace out. This is Lord Rick bringing you Unionville, which used to be a Confederate mining camp, Confederate sympathizer until Union members came and was like, uh-uh, we're not having that. And they came in here and named it Unionville.
basically took over and got rid of the name Dixie, even though I've seen a site that said Dixie Ranch, there are some people who still hold the name Dixie here to heart. But this town had up to 3,000 people, and now look at it. And it boomed in the 60s, and it boomed in the 1870s. Actually, 1860s and 1870s, three million was pulled off out of the mines above. And in the cemetery, most of those men will be miners. Let's continue our trek through Buena Vista Canyon. And it's for sale. You could own this lovely property. Bridge, house, beautiful scenery, see UFOs every night, and live in Mark Twain shoes. Except he didn't turn out to be a good miner. He found that out and he ended up leaving this town and he spent a majority of his time in Virginia City. This is Lord Rick at the Unionville Covered Bridge.